Did you know Tony Hawk once skateboarded on the grounds of the White House with official permission? Welcome to the exhilarating world of the Birdman, a skateboarder who became an icon, proving that passion knows no limits. Join us as we dive deep into the life of Tony Hawk, the legend who spun his way into the world of sports and our hearts. He's not just a skateboarder, he's an icon and a testament to where passion can take you. It was 1999 at the X Games when the world saw the peak of Hawk's talent. It was one of the biggest moments for him in his entire career. Here, Hawk did something no one had done before. He completed a trick called the 900. This was a hard trick where he spun around two and a half times in the air on his skateboard, leaving spectators and fellow skateboarders shocked. Even though Hawk was recovering from a broken elbow at the time, he was successful in attempting this trick on his 12th attempt. But Hawk didn't just stop there. Over 17 years as a professional, Hawk won more than 70 skateboarding contests. He even won gold medals at the 1995 and 1997 X Games. But his story wasn't just about breaking records. It's the journey of a skater who worked hard to become one of the best. Anthony Frank Hawk was not an ordinary boy from San Diego, California. Born on May 12, 1968, young Tony showed signs of exceptional talent from an early age. Not only was his talent in the classrooms, but on the streets with his skateboard. Tony's parents, Nancy and Frank Peter Rupert Hawk, had hoped he might follow a more conventional path, especially given his incredible IQ of 144, which marked him as gifted. School advisors recommended advanced classes for him. His family, however, including his two older sisters, Pat and Lenore, and an older brother, Steve, gave him their full support when he found his passion in skateboarding. As soon as he turned nine, Tony was already skateboarding all the time. By the age of 12, he got his first sponsorship, a company named Dogtown Skateboards. At just 14, he was a professional skateboarder, and at 16, people considered him one of the best skateboarders in the world. But Tony Hawk's journey wasn't without its unique adventures. In 1981, people saw Tony on TV for the first time when he was on a show called Captain Kangaroo. All while juggling his time between Gene Farb Middle School and Torrey Pines High School, from where he graduated in 1986. While most kids his age were trying to figure out college or jobs, Tony was buying his first house, thanks to his earnings from skateboarding. Going back to the beginning, it was in the mid-1980s when Hawk started making a name for himself. He clinched the title of National Skateboard Association World Champion for 12 consecutive years. This was a triumph that would be etched in the annals of skateboarding. During these years, he was spinning and flipping on the vert ramp as if he were defying gravity itself, securing 73 titles between the 1980s and 90s. It seemed like every year from 1984 to 1996, Hawk was unstoppable, being named the top vert skater without fail. Around this time, Hawk was grinding it out, trying to master the 900, and it wasn't a walk in the park. Hawk broke a rib while training for this trick. But the year that he left the audience shocked with the 900 was also the time when he decided to retire from professional competition. But he still continued performing at the annual X Games until 2003. Tony Hawk not only mastered the art of the 900 spin on a skateboard, but also the 360 degree spin of entrepreneurship. In the early 1990s, Hawk started Birdhouse, a skateboard and accessories manufacturer with his fellow skateboarder, Per Willinder. He later started other enterprises such as Blitz, a skateboard products distributor, and Hawk Clothing, a children's skate clothing line. In 1999, in collaboration with Activision, he launched Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, which became one of the most successful video game franchises of all time. He also created Tony Hawk's Boom Boom Huck Jam in 2002, a show that combined choreographed skateboarders, BMX bikers, and motorcycle stunt riders. Just as seamlessly as he transitions between tricks on his board, Hawk enters into the limelight of Hollywood, making waves in movies like Triple X 2002 and Lords of Dogtown 2005, and gracing the small screen on shows such as CSI Miami, and even surprising with his unexpected talents on The Masked Singer. Hawk also authored several books on skateboarding, one of which is his autobiography, Hawk, Occupation Skateboarder, 
which was published in 2000. To say that Hawk left no stone unturned in the pursuit of trying new things and making a difference wouldn't be wrong. Hawk spun the wheels of time and gravity to become a skateboarding legend. He's known for his feats on the board, but his impact off it is equally legendary. Determined to make skateboarding accessible to all, Tony established the Tony Hawk Foundation in 2002 to build skate parks in low-income neighborhoods, their impact reaching across all 50 U.S. states. Other legends in the sport, including John Cardiel, gave a shout-out to Hawk. He listed Tony alongside greats like Gonzalez and Christian Hasoy. Tony's been at the forefront of many historic moments in skateboarding, from his iconic 900 trick to the memorable day when he skateboarded on the White House grounds, marking the first time someone skateboarded on White House grounds with official permission. His induction into the Skateboarding Hall of Fame in 2009 is a testament to his mark on the sport. In 2012, the world of skateboarding turned its eyes to India, as Hawk and his team performed the first ever vert skate show in the country. They didn't just skate, they made history. But it wasn't all about twists and turns. They also visited Mahatma Gandhi's residence, where an exciting crowd of young children greeted them. But wait, did you know about the jaw-dropping 540-degree stunt they pulled off? The adventures and memories from this India trip were later shared with fans on Hawk's Ride YouTube channel, making its debut on February 4, 2013. Tony Hawk, despite the challenges age brings, continued to push the boundaries. Fast forwarding to June 27, 2016, Hawk claimed to have done his final 900 trick as he turned 48 years old. And then in 2021, he's back from retirement, competing at the X Games. He took part in the Vert Best Trick event and came in fourth out of nine competitors. Not too shabby for someone who's supposed to be taking it easy. But then again, when has Tony ever been one to follow the rulebook? Today's athletes, such as Nia Houston and Lizzie Armanto, speak highly of Hawk, drawing inspiration from his journey, his resilience, and his dedication to the sport. They're a testament to Tony's lasting influence. Hawk's influence is undeniable. In the world of skateboarding, many names will come and go, but there will always be a special place for the Birdman, Tony Hawk. <laughs>